be doing an Ikea DIYs video for you and I'm super, super excited about it. A lot of these items are actually inspired by anthropology. I hope you like this video. I hope you get some inspo from it. And finally, if you like this video, then don't forget to give it a like down below and leave me a comment as well. Tell me which project was your favorite. Let's actually get started now. Okay, so the first project up is a knot pillow and obviously inspired by anthropology. I saw this pillow, I thought it looked super, super cute. I had taken up a little bit of embroidery about like a year ago. I learned how to do the actual knots that were kind of the decorative piece on this pillow. So when I saw it, I was like, wait, I could totally do something like this. So let's get started with the pillow. So when I was at Ikea a couple months ago, I picked up the girly pillowcase and it's plain white, it's really affordable and it's really just the perfect base to work with. So I opened it up and then I grabbed this erasable fabric marker that disappears with heat. Then to actually create the design, I took out my measuring tape and I marked a little dot every 1.25 inches across the top of the pillow. And then working down the side of the pillow, I marked off a little dot every 1.75 inches. I'm actually offsetting the second row of dots by a little under an inch so that the dots will be staggered in a diamond shape. And then from there, I'm eyeballing adding in dots across all the rest of the pillow going line by line. I then grabbed my iron and removed the first dot on all of the rows that had been staggered down. So basically row two, four, six, eight, and so on. Next up, I grabbed some embroidery floss from the dollar store. The floss I picked was multicolored, but if I was doing this again, I would pick solid colors and then add in white and black string to supplement. I'm taking three strands of floss, threading it through an upholstery needle and pulling it so that the needle is in the middle of the string. In total, this leaves us with six strands of floss that we're working with for the designs. So starting out with the needle on the inside of the pillow, poke it up and pull it through until there's about an inch or an inch and a half left on the inside of the pillow. Wrap the thread around the needle three times and then poke it back through to the inside of the pillow. When you pull the needle through, you're basically left with a really big, nice French knot. Then just move the needle along and repeat that going down the line of knots. So just to show you again, I'm wrapping it around three times and then pushing it back through to the inside of the pillow. I made each row a different color, just like the inspo photo from Anthropology. I found the easiest and fastest way to create the knots was to make the strands of thread really, really long. I made them about the length of two of my wingspans, so like stretching my arms apart twice and using that. I know this sounds like the string is going to be super, super long, but that is basically just enough to do a full line of knots. Once you're done a full row, just flip the pillow inside out and snip in between each knot. And I just secured the strings with a double knot to make sure that none of those would move at all. And then to just clean it all up, I trimmed off all the edges of the strings. And I basically just continued this row after row after row until all the knots were complete. Honestly, I just was like watching TV, relaxing while I was doing this. And when I was done all the knots, I looked at the pillow and I just felt like the colors were a bit too vibrant. So I mixed a mixture of white acrylic paint and water together and I did a light coat of this white paint mixture over each knot. And then once I was done that, I felt like some of the lighter knots didn't have enough definition, so I actually went back and used a tiny paintbrush with black acrylic paint, and I basically painted some of those strings black. So this whole step could have easily been avoided if I had just gotten strings in my exact color scheme and then added in strings that were actually solid white and solid black. So that's honestly what I'd recommend if you're trying to do this exact project with these exact colors. But either way, when all of that was said and done with these extra steps, the pillow totally worked out and it looks so much like the inspo photo. So let me know what you think about this knot pillow. I will say in retrospect, the color scheme, although it's very close to the anthropology one, you can totally customize this to whatever color is that you want in your space and have something that looks really, really unique. So the next project up is a DIY lamp. And the thing is, this is like literally the cheapest table lamp from Ikea that they sell. Um, and so I just thought it's a really unique 
shape. Could I make this look way more my style? Because as is with the color scheme, it's not my style. This is a project that in my mind was going to be so easy, but it just did not work out. However, I found a way to make it really, really good. I will show you a little bit about my process for entertainment sake, and then I'll share with you what I actually ended up doing and hopefully you like it. So let me just go ahead and get started with this Ikea lamp DIY. So this is the Ikea Svale work lamp and it's fully plastic with a dark gray base. So I got the fun idea to do a paint splatter design for the base, thinking maybe I can make this look like pottery and um, it did not go as planned. I started off spray painting the base with Krylon chalk paint in linen white. Then I went ahead and mixed up a few different colors for the paint splatter, which were off-white, then light pink, then light gray and brown. Then just using my paintbrush in my hand, I did little flicks of paint and little dots using the back of the paintbrush to do that paint splatter effect. But then I just felt like the overall tone of the whole base was too blue toned. So I spray painted it this time with Krylon chalk paint and Colonial White, which is basically ivory. And then I went ahead and did some more paint splatters. But to be honest, you guys, I hated it. So this is where it left me. Okay, so I have uh, uh, given up on this initial idea, but what just occurred to me when I was thinking about what to do with this is that my original idea for this was actually to wrap it with this caning material that I have. I don't know why I veered away from this idea, especially because now when I'm like laying it up against Oop, there's the little base. If I'm laying it up against the base, I think it would actually look really cool and really unique if I can manage to do it. I have never worked with this material. I bought it for an upcoming project I have in my bedroom for um, a headboard. Well, actually I bought a couple different kinds here. Let's get started. I'm hoping this one works out on the first go because I don't think my patients can handle this at this point, okay? I just don't think so. <laughs> Please like say a little prayer for me and wish me luck. So I cut out a piece of the cane webbing and I soaked it in warm water for about 10 minutes just to make it more malleable. Then I just dried it off with a towel and got to work. I reattached the lampshade and the wiring and then I just started attaching the cane webbing to the base using hot glue. So basically I was working on the back section, I'd hot glue a little section there at the bottom, stick down the cane, put a little bit more hot glue, stick down the cane again and kept going on from there. Once the cane was attached all around the bottom of the base, I flipped over the lamp so that the front side was facing up and I basically just cut out the excess from the very front, leaving a couple inches of cane on each side for me to work with. I then just trimmed off the bottom cane strips that were poking out just to make it a little bit easier to work with. And then I'm wrapping the bottom section of the cane around the circle base, flipping it over and hot gluing the cane down to the inside of the base. I'm just using a pair of scissors to hold down the cane while the glue dries. Then I'm just making a little diagonal cut about half an inch up from where the circle base meets the stand part to make it easier to finish wrapping the cane around the bottom section. Now I'm just cutting off a little bit more of the excess cane to get it to a better size. I'm leaving about half an inch on the edge and then I'm just working my way attaching it to the back of the base as well as on the inside. Then I've taken a new rectangle piece of cane that is the size of the full length of the base and I'm just hot gluing it to the bottom of the base as well as along the sides. To remove the excess, I'm actually just putting my scissors in between each weave and snipping, and that way I can get really, really close to the edge of the lamp base. And that's it, you guys. This is my super textured cane table lamp. So I hope you found my process at least a little bit entertaining. I definitely like the way that it turned out. I think it turned out really, really cute and boho and actually a much better fit to my space. So I'm glad that it didn't work out with the paint splatter method and that it did work out with the cane method because I think it's just so unique and so cute. And I love the extra texture that it's gonna add in to my space. 
okay, so definitely saving the best for last. This last project is a DIY wall sconce with tassels. It was inspired by something that I saw in Anthropology. If you buy it outright from the store, it's $160. So I just, it was just never gonna happen for me. And I can't wait to include this in like when I'm actually, you're gonna see this actually styled in my bedroom decorating video, which will come probably in maybe a month. I'm in the process of buying this stuff for it, but I have to buy everything online. So you will see this used. Um, I'm really excited about it. Let's get started. You'll just see what it's all about right now. So I'm starting out with the Akas Mini Lampshade from Ikea and I'm basically just taking it apart. So I'm pulling off the ribbons and removing the shade and what I'm left with is two things, the light holder and a metal ring. I'm going to be using both of these things, but on the light holder, I'm taking off the little clip that actually holds the light bulb in place in the center and I just don't want the clip edges to show. So I'm using some wire cutters and I'm cutting them off and then I'm reattaching it back in place using a little bit of hot glue. Next, I'm using this tomato trellis which I got at the Dollar Tree, but I've seen it at many different dollar stores as well. I'm just attaching the hoops by cutting off the little plastic clips that are keeping them in place. I initially was actually going to use all three of these hoops, but I ended up only using the smallest one and the largest one for this project. Next, I just went ahead and painted the hoops and the light holder with gold spray paint. I also did spray paint the initial metal ring that came with the lampshade gold as well. I needed a way to attach the largest hoop to the light holder and I decided to use mini wooden dowels also from the dollar store. So I'm just placing the light holder in the middle and measuring out how long they need to be and then I'm just cutting it to size with a wire cutter. I'm now repeating this so that I have three little dowels which I also spray painted gold to match. To attach the dowels, I'm applying E6000 and then I'm placing a dowel down, holding it in place and then using hot glue on either side. And the reason I'm doing this is because E6000 takes some time to dry and it also dries a little bit flexible, but you get a better bond, but with the hot glue you get a more rigid bond and also it's more instant. I left this to dry overnight and then I went back in with hot glue and I basically reinforced the sides to make them more uniform and this just made the whole structure super sturdy and I gave it another coat of gold spray paint and then I just moved on to creating tassels. So for this I'm using crochet thread in size number 10 from Michaels in the color cream. To actually create the tassels I cut a piece of cardboard to be about two and a half by three and a half inches and I cut a slit on either side of the top. Next I cut four pieces of string about four and a half inches long and placed each side into the slits at the top. Then holding onto the string with my thumb, I'm wrapping the thread around between 60 and 80 times. The more times you wrap it around, the more fluffy the tassels will be. And I did the majority of mine 60 times around. I just cut along the bottom edge with some scissors. I then took the strings that were secured in the slit out of the slits and tied a double knot at the top. Then I cut two pieces of string about four inches long and tied it around the tassel once then flip the tassel over and knot it on the other side twice, creating a double knot on that side. And then I just trimmed off the excess string with scissors once again. I basically just kept doing that over and over and over. This was honestly the best multitasking activity because I could do it while hanging out and relaxing and chatting and watching TV and all that good stuff. Once I was done making all of the tassels, I'm now ready to attach the tassels to the hoop. I'm just taking the two sets of strings at the top and tying a simple double knot around the hoop. Once all the tassels were on, I just trimmed off the ends to make it super clean at the top. And then I just repeated this whole process two more times and here are the three rings. Two larger rings are from the tomato trellis and the smallest one is from the IKEA lampshade. And now it's time to assemble this whole sconce. I first attached the largest hoop to the light holder and for this I just used some E6000 on each end of the wooden dowels and I placed the large hoop on top. After it was on I just added a little bit more E6000 to all of those edges to make sure it was super secured in place and I let this dry overnight. Then to attach the next hoop I used two long pieces of string and looped it around the hoop and I repeated that so that there were three sets of strings equally spread apart. Then I tied them off right above the bend in the light holder. To keep the strings from sliding down, I added some hot glue right in the corner of the bend and that worked perfectly. I did test out to make sure that everything was sitting straight at this point and then I just did some double knots to make sure it wasn't going anywhere. To attach the final small hoop, I basically did the exact same thing except I tied off the strings to the bottom of the light holder, securing them to each of the three center beams. 
When they all were attached, I just triple knotted them and cut off the excess string. Next up, I just grabbed the IKEA straddle light, which was only $6, and then I just spray painted the whole cord gold. To actually hang the sconce, I bought this metal rope hook which I'll link down below and I spray painted it gold once again just to match and then I just screwed it into the wall. I wrapped the cord of the light around the rope hook several times and seriously you guys, I just love how this turned out. Honestly, so good. So honestly, as I mentioned, that was my favorite. I love it so, so much. Let me know if it was your favorite or if one of the other projects was your favorite. I am planning to use this in my bedroom and the plan is for me to make another one and to have one on either side of my bed. So if you stick around, if you subscribe to me, in a couple weeks you'll see that video coming out. I'm really, really excited because this apartment is the first time I'm decorating the whole space in the exact vibe that I want. I don't feel like I was ever able to do that before, but this time I am and that's what I'm I'm gonna do. I'm probably about 5% there, but I'm getting there, okay? <laughs> I'm getting there. I'm trying to get all the stuff that I need um, for each space, and each space will have its own decorating video as well. But yeah, I'm really happy with how all these projects turned out, and I hope you are too. If you like this video, if you enjoyed watching it, then don't forget to give it a like down below. Leave me a comment to let the YouTube algorithm know. And also subscribe to me on this YouTube channel because that would make me super happy. You can also check me out on Instagram. I'm at DIYDelia with an underscore at the end. Thank you so much for watching and until next time. Bye.